All right, guys, so here we have another word problem dealing with an ellipse. So why don't we go ahead and read it, and then we'll talk about how we're going to set it up. It says an ice rink in the form of an ellipse has an equation, and it gives us the following equation, and this is measured in feet, and is being renovated. The new rink will have double the width and double the length, and then they tell us find the new equation. So we have an ice skating rink, right? It's being renovated. It's going to have double the width and double the length. They give us the equation, right? And this is an equation of the ellipse. Now, when we're dealing with an ellipse, okay, we need to determine, are we dealing with a horizontal or a vertical ellipse? Meaning, does it have a horizontal major axis or a vertical major axis, right? And we do that by looking at our equation, right? And in particular, we look at our values on the bottom here. So we look at our denominators, and which one is going to be the bigger of the two, right? Is 50 bigger than 20? Yes, it is, right? So that tells me, right, that this is going to be my a squared value, and this is going to be my b squared value. Remember, the bigger of the two values will always be your a squared value, right? So again, this will be my a squared, and this will be my b squared. And since my a squared value is underneath my x, this tells me that I'm dealing with a horizontal ellipse, meaning as a horizontal major axis. So if we were to draw this out, we have a horizontal ellipse. Here is my major axis, right? on the horizontal, and then I have a vertical minor axis. And we can go ahead and label these parts. We know that this is going to be, I'll do it in a different color. This will be B, this will be B, this will be A, and this will be A, right? And that's talking about your vertices and your co-vertices. So here are my vertices on the major axis, and here are my co-vertices on the minor axis. And what this A is telling you is the distance from the vertice to the center, right? The distance from the vertice to the center. Same thing on your co-vertices, right? The distance from the co-vertice to the center. The distance from the co-vertice to the center, right? So here's our equation, right? Let's go ahead and write out our um, equation for a horizontal ellipse. That's going to be the following. We'll have x squared all over a squared plus y squared all over b squared equal to 1, right? This is my equation for a horizontal ellipse, all right? So knowing that, I know that my a squared value here is going to be 50. So if I have a squared equal to 50, right, my b squared value is going to be 20. b squared is going to be 20, all right? So let's just determine what a is and what b is. And in order to do that, we're going to take the square root on both sides. So, when I take the square root on both sides here, I get a is equal to the square root of 50, right? And we can break this guy apart. We can have the following. We'll have the square root of 25 times the square root of 2, right? This, we do, this is going to be just 5 here, right? So, we'll have 5 square roots of 2. So, a is going to be equal to 5 square roots of 2, okay? So a is 5 square root of 2, so again, this will be 5 square root of 2, 5 square root of 2. So I'm going to go ahead and just record that a is equal to 5 square root of 2. Now let's find b here. So let's erase some of this work, and let's find b. So b, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to take the square root on both sides, so we get b is equal to the square root of 20. Okay? And again, we can break this apart. We can say it's square root of 4 times the square root of 5. This will just be the square root of 2. So b is equal to 2 square root of 5. Okay? So again, let's go ahead and record that. b is equal to 2 square root of 5. All right? Okay. So we can go ahead and erase this work here. And let's talk about it. So we know that this will be my width. All right, this whole thing, and this will be my length, okay? So, we know that the width here is going to be 2 times a, right? So, I'm going to do a plus a, or 2 times a. So, in that case, if I do 2 times a, right, what is that going to be? Well, it's just going to be 2 times 5 square roots of 2, right, which is going to be 10 square roots of 2. So, the width of this original rank is going to be 10 square roots of 2. Okay, keep that in mind. We're going to do the same thing for B. Okay, so here is B. We want to find the length, so it's going to be B plus B, or 2 times B. So I do 2B, right? I'll get 2 times, right? And I have 2 square roots of 5, right? 2 square roots of 5. And this will be the following. I'll get 4 square roots of 5. Okay? 
So from this, right, knowing this, we can now find the new dimensions of this new length, of this new rink. Because what, it's, what does it say? It says the new rink will have double the width and double the length. So here is my width, here is my length. We're going to double both of those. Or simply just multiply by two. So my new, okay, my new um, width here, I can say 2a of my new is going to be 2 times 10 square root of 2, or just 20 square root of 2, right? That's going to be my new width. Okay, my new length, same thing. I'm just going to do 2 times my length, which is just going to be 8 square root of 5. So 2b, right, is going to be 8 square root of 5. Okay, we're almost done here. We can just go ahead and put this final information into our equation. Okay, so we have the new width and we have the new length. It's right here. Okay, now we have to put it into an equation. So let's go ahead and erase this. And again, using the equation of a horizontal ellipse, we're just going to go ahead and plug this information in. Before we do that, let's solve for a here so we have the actual a value. When I do that, right, I'm going to divide both sides by 2 here. Okay, so if I have 2a equal to 20 square root of 2, I'm going to divide by 2, divide by 2, and a here will be 10 square root of 2. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing for this one right here, I'm going to solve for b, so divide both sides by 2. We know that 8 square root of 5 divided by 2, okay, will simply just be 4 square root of 5. So again, you're doing 2b equal to 8 square root of 5, divide by 2, divide by 2, right? 8 divided by 2 is going to be 4, so you have 4 square root of 5 for b. So b is equal to 4 square root of 5. Right? So we have the A, we have the B, okay, of the new rank. All right, let's go ahead and just plug it in now. So we'll have the following. We're going to have here X squared all over. Now look what happens here. So A is going to be 10 square root of 2 squared plus Y squared all over. B, same thing, we'll have 4 square root of 5 squared equal to 1. Okay, now let's talk about how we can go ahead and finish this off. So notice here we have this exponent. Look what happens, right? We're going to go ahead and distribute inside. So we'll have 10 squared and then we'll have the square root of 2 squared, right? So our final answer will be the following. x squared over, right? 10 squared is 100 and the square root of 2 squared is simply just going to be 2, right? So we have 100 times 2, which is going to be 200, plus y squared all over, same thing. We have 4 squared here, which is going to be 16. And then we have the square root of 5 squared, right, which will just be 5. So essentially what we have here is 16 times 5, right, which we know is going to be 80 equal to 1. This right here will be my final equation, okay, of the new ice rink. Okay, and that is it.